100 yards, turn right. at your destination. Beautiful old Spanish mission style place. Like something out of an old Western movie. Felicidades! A great purchase. Here's the keys. You can move in whenever you're ready.
buena esperanza. Disappear into the jungle with only the temples for company. Who doesn't want to do that sometimes? but it's right in the heart of one of the most beautiful villages in Mexico. Right by the East Coast, too. You're gonna love it. Muy bien, que aproveche. You'll want to get a broom for all that sand. I have a story to tell you, my friend, about the old wolf in the swamp. Are we going to a zoo? A swamp. I'll pick you up. You have arrived at your destination. That's the old wolf. <laughs> no, no, that's an old truck. The wolf is waiting for us at the swamp. Haley asked us to clear some debris. And I've got just the car. But we need to get there first. Of course! Who do you think I am? The driver who destroyed the record breaking him out of fences. Uh, that's fair. Right. In two 
100 yards. Turn right. Turn right. See? Go to Hero One Piece. And <laughs> gave me a few heart attacks. Careful there! And now, let me introduce you to the fourth Lobo. This car is more your style. Now that's a hecking good wolf. We call it Lobo here. Marketing in this country is outstanding. Let's get to work. See all that Russian stuff? Clear it out! What? No! It's not just an excuse to throw the Lobo around. It is just an excuse to throw the Lobo around. In the 90s, Ford decided that they needed to rebrand the F-150 for the Mexican market. And the name Lobo just has a real ring to it. They started using the badge in 1997, and the rest is history. The Ford Lobo quickly became one of the most popular vehicles in the country. Lobo is still used for the modern Rangers, like the one based on the F-150 Raptor you're driving. But we don't just call it Lobo. No, no. We call it Lobo Raptor. So it's the same car? No. There are loads of differences. Like a dog and a wolf. Lobo only comes in XLT and with higher trim levels. The base version is still sold in Mexico as the F-150, but the Lobo is the Elite F-150. Job's done, and the scratches will buff right out. Thanks for the help. Now I just need to get my abuelo's old F-100 back to the garage. I've got 1,400 horses, and I need you to help with them. I think I know what this is. I'll be right over. Yards. Turn right. Turn right.
guards who will arrive at your destination. You have arrived at your destination. I know you've got one of these. Somehow. So you know a little bit about what you're in for. Let's go! Let's take this down to the beach. Stick it in AWD if you like. There's some nice curbs up ahead. This is 2021's EV of the year. And it was up against things like the Taycan and the e-tron and the recharge. It set three Guinness World Records, and it's inspired by the beautiful original Mac 1. And I'm telling you all of this because the Mac E was built right here in Mexico at Cuauhtitlan Assembly. Calm down. I know you like to go fast, but I had a big breakfast. Hey, I have to keep this back. <laughs> Be careful with it. Cuauhtitlan Assembly has been building cars since the 60s. And more than 2.2 million cars later, we're sitting in an actual space machine made here in Mexico. Quite a journey from Cougars and Thunderbirds and F-150s to this. This isn't just a prototype. Cuauhtitlan Assembly does a range of options for the Mac e A 68 kilowatt hour standard and an 88 kilowatt hour extended range version. It will give you over 300 miles of range on a single charge. The Performance GT version is the really wild one. 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. This one is uh, quite a bit faster. Honestly, when I first tried it, I had to go and sit in a quiet room for a bit. And I've flown airplanes in a storm. It's wild tech. You can switch from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive at the touch of a button. And when you get into tuning, you can basically tweak every one of the seven engines individually. It can make 1,400 horsepower and a ton of downforce at 160 miles per hour thanks to the Aero 2. So what you're saying is, not bad for something that weighs more than an F-150 of yours. Yes. Whoa! make it go around corners like that. I'm really asking. And there we go. Sunrise over the sea. Beautiful. But we're not done. There's one more thing to look at. I'll let you know as soon as I have uh, found it. Okay, this one will be epic. I found the Porsche Carrera. You know what that means? Racing? Now what do you mean, found? <laughs> In a barn, of course. And of course it's racing. Come meet me at Guanajuato. Turn right. 
turn right. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. This beauty got her name from the Carrera Panamericana. The races don't run anymore, but who can blame us if we take it out one more time? Right? Let's see what this car can do. There's Jamin! Guess he wanted one last race. Let's do this! Panamericana ran from 1950 to 1954, originally celebrating the opening of the Mexican section of the longest road in the world, the Panamericana Highway. The first race had 132 competitors, and everyone turned up. Amateurs to F1 drivers, men, women, professionals, anyone who had a car. Do you know anyone who participated? Aleja thinks Papa Fernando did, but she thinks Papa Fernando did everything. I know we used to go to the races with my grandfather. Ah, que buenos recuerdos. There was no speed limit before 2012, and you'd see cars doing 180 miles per hour. Not that I'd know anything about that. 2,178 miles of the Pan American Highway run through Mexico. The race itself had nine stages and lasted five days. But the sheer distance wasn't the only challenge. Constant changes in the elevation from sea level to three kilometers up. The most challenging road race in the world. The winner of the very first Carrera Panamericana was Herschel McGriff, who drove an Oldsmobile 88 at an average speed of 88 miles per hour. The Porsche Carrera got its name thanks to Hans Hermann, who won the small sports cars category in 1954. He drove the Porsche 550 Spider and came third overall. He was sick before the race and his tires came off at the start. He really pulled through against the odds. Porsche had six cars competing in 1954 and all of them made it through the end. A lot of others didn't, let me tell you. Enjoying yourself, are you? Yeah, I kinda had a feeling you were. 1954 was the last year the original Carrera Panamericana took place. But it gave us the most famous Porsche model, the Carrera you're driving right now. 
the Carrera RS 2.7 was the first production street racing 911. It was built on the 911S 2.4, the fastest Porsche you could buy at the time, and a popular choice in the later Carrera Panamericana races. The race was revived in 1988 and ran to 2016, staying true to the original races with high-speed road stages. The routes for the race were carefully selected every year by planning committee and local government to ensure they were race-worthy and that they can be closed up for two hours. You could almost say they've been preparing for the festival for a very long time. This is Jamin Sexit. Having fun, my friend. Take care. Looking forward to seeing what you can do out there. Have fun now, yeah? Great race! Almost like we did a little Panamericana with a friend! Anyways, hope you had fun with this little stroll through cars hechos in Mexico. It was great! And let me know if you uh, find any other cars like that.